so we wanted to do a quick Digby update. It's been a couple weeks since the last video and we've been sporadically working on little tidbits here and there on the engine swaps. Like my dad had said previously, you can't really just slap another engine <laughs> in a car and expect it to work. So we're gonna use this episode to kind of highlight some of the changes that we had previously mentioned that we were gonna have to make between the swap engine that was coming from the 126 into a 123. And so dad, I'm gonna ask you some questions and then we are actually going to show some B-rolls and stuff. But at the end of this, I'm gonna highlight some other things and other videos that we've covered or my dad has previously made over the last 10 years that actually highlight all these type of things. But to get into it, some of the main things that we've had to cover, we're gonna do this side of the engine first and then we're gonna talk about the other side yeah. of the engine. And so things we've encountered is we have, you know, the oil filter housing and we also had to replace the gasket down below. And so dad, what did you notice and what was the reasons why we actually went ahead and replaced that part specifically on this engine swap? Well, there's two reasons. Number one, the oil filler housing on the W126 is different than the W123 because the W123 uses a pressure hose for the oil pressure and the W126 is electronics. So we had to change that out anyway. But remember those early episodes? Yep. We found out there's no oil pressure yep. in Digby and that's because the threaded hole right down there, that threaded hole that you screw that hose into was stripped out and they plugged it. So there's two reasons we needed to change that oil filler housing. The other thing is it's a very common so that's three reasons, right? right. Like one, <laughs> two, <laughs> three. three. The third reason is this is one of the most common oil leak areas in the OM617 and 616 engines is the gasket. It just gets old and hard and we have a very special waffle gasket uh, that we use that prevents leaks in the future. So that was Joel, the three reasons we changed that oil filler out. <laughs> Another thing that we replaced on this side of the engine was the vacuum shutoff. And so, Dad, what was the reason why that we addressed that? Well, I just got my vacuum hand pump tester, hooked it up to the shutoff valve here on the back of the injection pump, and it wasn't holding vacuum. So this is another real common thing. We get this all the time. People, hey, my diesel won't shut off. They think it's related to the key or something electric, and it's not. These diesels are shut off by vacuum. The vacuum valve back here pulls the rack inside the injection pump and shuts the fuel off. So a lot of times, you know, you turn the key off on these old diesels, it won't quit. Yeah. It just won't quit. So gotta use that stop we, button. <laughs> you gotta use that stop. So we went ahead and tested the vacuum shut off. It was bad, wouldn't hold vacuum. So we replaced that. Glow plugs. Well we obviously we were just not gonna go into this with you know an old city yeah. set of glow plugs. So we went ahead, we got in there, cleaned up the carbon and put in new glow plugs. Right. What, why yeah. is your recommendation though for people on to address glow plugs, especially in the condition that the engine's in at this point? Well, this is another job that I don't want to do down the road, and it's really easy to do it when the engine's out of the car. You know, glow plugs don't last forever, but the important thing is that carbon, that carbon buildup. Um, we're gonna show people right here, it was really bad. We could hardly get the reamer started, the carbon was so built up. So if you have a diesel, you know, that's hard starting, rough starting, smokes a lot at idle, it may be that your pre-chamber is just full of carbon. So we want to make sure that was done. That's probably more important than, than the glow plugs. But since we had them out, new ones went in. Well, so we rebuilt and adjust the fuel injectors. Yeah. Once well, again. Well, we know already there? why that's so important, right? Do we even need to tell people <laughs> why that's important? I mean, Let's they can just go back and look at the old episode. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll show them a picture to. right here. Yeah. Just to emphasize how important fuel injectors are on these old diesels. So as you can see, the blown pre-chamber and the connecting rod were all related to fuel injection. Yeah. And so it was one of the main reasons that we, poor Digby's old engine, <laughs> went on that horrific adventure of self-destruction. <laughs> so Dad, I want you to talk about, we have a new kit. Yeah, brand new kit. Brand new kit. You're excited about this I'm kit, excited but we, haven't, about we haven't released it yet. No. It's going to come out in the new year. Yeah. No, maybe next week. You're, you're, oh, I, you're, you're getting, you're getting <laughs> Christmas, you're getting I can't a Christmas promise, spirit. I know. <laughs> you can't wait. I'll we'll have to give this a Christmas present for everyone. Or new so, kit. what does that kit help? Well, I'm finding uh, from the emails that we receive, a lot of people complain about, you know, hard starting when the engines are cold. 
um, they complain about maybe power loss at freeway speed and they say well Ken I've changed my filters I've changed the fuel tank screen I've got all uh, and I still there's something wrong well what we're finding out is the problems right down here in this a mechanical pump which is called a lift pump some people call it the primer pump but you, you don't want to confuse that with the hand primer pump but this lift pump has check valves in it what happens when those check valves wear it doesn't give the pressure you need to the injection pump. It also will leak back down so you don't have any fuel up here to start the engine, or the engine will start and quit, start and quit. And it's a really good indicator that this lift pump is, has gone bad. So we have a kit that will allow you to open that lift pump up and replace the check valve, put new ceiling rings in it, and uh, you may be surprised at the difference that's going to make in these old engines. I'm seeing this across the board because these engines are now so old. Yeah, so it's basically a rebuild kit. Yeah, it's those. a little rebuild kit. Not real expensive and not hard to do. It's something, if you can do oil changes, you can rebuild your lift pump. New fuel filters yeah. and the AC compressor. Yeah, well, the, the AC compressor on this engine was frozen up and we know that the AC compressor on Digby's engine was rattling like crazy because, you know, the, the clutch was all shot. So. I had a very good uh, compressor back there in the shop, so we're putting on a replacement AC compressor. We're probably not going to charge the AC system in Big B because uh, that can get kind of pricey. Yeah, you have to go through hose replacement. But I just wanted to put it on there in case the future owner. Am I hinting here? Yeah, they <laughs> want, <laughs> want to get their AC working. Other thing. <laughs> One of the big things that we knew we were going to have to cover when taking this engine out of the 126 and putting it into a 123 chassis was the motor mounts. Yeah. Can you talk about the importance of the differences in that? Is it just based on size or is there some other reasons why you really need to um, address that? Well, it's pretty simple, really, Joel. I mean, if you didn't change those motor mount arms and you tried to put a W126 diesel into a W123, you go, wow. Those mounts don't line up because the chassis, the subframes are different on the two cars. So they're just totally different mount locations. So you have to change those arms. That's one of the key things. We have to change those arms. We have to change the oil cooler hoses. We have to yep. put W123 oil cooler hoses. Of course, we already talked about having to replace the oil filler housing. And there's a few other things, uh, some linkage changes and so on. But those are, those are the ma major things that you have to change. So now on to the other side of the engine, we have the short hose on the thermostat. Yeah, right here. That's a coolant hose that hardly ever gets replaced. You know, because you have to take the thermostat housing off and replace the hose and it's kind of hidden down there, but that's something you definitely want to replace when the engine's out the car and even if the engine's not out the car, that's a pretty easy one to do. Yeah. And of course, they got a new thermostat and I had to clean up all these nipples Aluminum nipples had corrosion on them. So this little unit here, the thermostat housing has kind of been refurbished, if you want to use that word. Now, I remember way back when, I've actually had to pull one of these off when it was in the engine. Yeah. Is this a common problem with these, or is it just a good habit to kind of replace certain seals when you have the engine out? Well, when you have the engine out, for one thing, the coolant's already drained. So you don't have to worry about coolant running all over the engine. The other thing is you've got easy access, real easy access. So it's not that difficult to do it in the car. You're just going to have to deal with draining the coolant and then taking the extra hoses off. But this is something that probably every diesel owner should look at closely and replace if this looks like it's starting to age and crack. Another thing we had done. And it's something I think you might almost be famous for, at least in my head, because of your <laughs> valve wrenches. But you did a valve adjustment. Yeah. You know, and I don't know if you could re-explain as many times as you've had That's, about yeah. the importance of valve yeah. adjusting. But we went ahead and we did a valve adjustment on the new engine. Can you just give a quick highlight on... Sure. You know, now I'll talk a little history here. I remember almost 20 years ago, I picked up this diesel... It was a turbo diesel, W123, and the owner had said, okay, I took it into the shop and they told me that the engine was shot, that it had no compression. The compression was weak, it's going to require a you know, $5,000, $6,000 overhaul. And I just bought the car for parts. 
And when I got home, you know, I wasn't all that familiar with these. I started doing some research and I found out that you know, these old diesels like this, you have to adjust the valves and the valves should be adjusted about every 12,000 miles, which seems like quite often, but it's critical. And I pulled the valve cover off and I bought this set of German wrenches that were used to adjust valves. And, I, I could, and first off, I adjusted the valves and they were, they were all tight, you know, and I'm going, wow, I put everything back together, started, the engine started right up and ran beautifully. But during that process, I found out that my hands hurt. My hands literally hurt trying to use those factory German wrenches, and the heads were so big you couldn't get them down on those yep. adjusting nuts. Remember, remember yep. we talked about that? It's almost 15 years. Well, it was also, you just had the issue too, the of them sliding right, off, yeah. and you didn't want to strip them, because oh. you strip your valve, you know. Yeah. This has got to be a better tool. So, <laughs> you know, what was 15, 16 years ago, we went into the shop and got my grinder and welder out, and I said, let's build a better set of valve adjusting wrenches. So that's how it all happened. There you go. <laughs> so I got to use them again this you past week. Again. Probably for the 1,000th time, know. I don't know. I don't know how many <laughs> thousands of sets of those wrenches we sold. Uh, the turbo yeah. drain pipe seals. Yeah. We, it's another seal. <laughs> Everyone it's another, makes, it's another one yeah. of those things that the engine's out. If you have the opportunity, it's a good opportunity to do this. So we went ahead and we replaced that. But Well, we haven't quite put the tube in yet. The tube's going to go in later today before we drop the turbo back on. I'm going to refer back to the video we did earlier on digging out the old sealant. You know, I had all caulked up with silicone. That's so typical. He even had a rag wrapped around. No, I think Digby had a rag wrapped around the, the turbo right. drain tube. So once again, this is something that you may have to address because of the age of these engines is to replace the seals on that uh, drain pipe tube, and we have a kit, you know, and a special tool we make to do that with it in the car. Yeah. So the other thing, <coughs> good? Uh, I think I'm good. <laughs> that needs some water. So, also related to the turbo, yeah. we went ahead and we rebuilt the turbo. Yeah. You know, so can once you talk again, about the importance of rebuilding well, that turbo? Once again, it's, uh, you know, these engines have two, 300,000 miles on them. Turbos don't go forever. And that's a job that's way easier when you've got the engine out of the car. The other thing is, a lot of times this gasket, even if your turbo's okay, this gasket goes bad. It gets crushed down, starts to leak, you'll leak exhaust fumes. You might be even smelling some exhaust yeah. fumes into the cabin of the car. So this gave us an opportunity to pull the manifold assembly off, open up the turbo, replace the seals and the bearings in the turbo, and then put a new gasket on it. We're going to take that whole assembly after we put the new downpipe seals in, we're going to drop that on later today. Okay. The Volvo regulator, that's no, another look, one where it's just, you know, we see how often that these get worn down and cause huge issues. And yeah. people think that, oh, it's this and this and this. And I was like, well, it's just Suddenly the battery's brushes. dead, right? Yeah. And then, so, well, my battery goes dead. Right. Okay, so this was a good example. You saw the video earlier I did on the importance of a voltage regulator and why you want to even carry a spare in your trunk. Okay. And so, we're going to kind of wrap it up here, Joel. Well, the front crank seal. Yeah, but I don't really want to do that. Well, I know, but oh, at God. some point... We've we got to get this engine back in the car. I don't <laughs> want to do the front crank seal. <laughs> you just got to do the front crank Why? seal. Why? Why do we have to do Because the you just spent the entire episode telling people that you should do these things when the engine is out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the front crank seal right there. And this job uh, probably take us about an hour to do it. Uh, probably take us about an hour to do it right now where we have easy access we can get our, our impacts in here and pull this whole pulley assembly off and probably change the v-belts too at the same time but you know the reason I was laughing Joel I don't want to do this job it's just another job to do just you know I'm, I'm, I've got to get this engine going I just another job to do <laughs> You want to get Digby driving. But guess what? You know, there's no oil leak there now, but guess what? You know Murphy's Law, right? But I also, it's like your Murphy's Law with stuff with us, and so if we think about it, it's going to happen. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if we just think about this seal leaking, I guarantee that a month after we get Digby going, we'll start seeing drips coming out of the front crank seal. So that's going to get replaced later today. I do have a, a complete kit and a couple special tools and complete instructions on how to do this yourself with the engine in the car. So that's everything so far, just on the engine, not even on the <laughs> transmission. Not even, oh no! 
<laughs> which we'll probably maybe do a different update yeah, on we'll that do a one different. because that actually yeah. has some interesting stuff that yeah. you know even related to if you didn't have an extra set of hands you would have had to come up with a different solution so we'll cover that stuff in a different video yeah, but we, I want to mention yeah. to the audience everyone here watching this please if you're interested in any of these little things that we had talked about which really aren't little jobs but as we've kind of covered it, made it seem kind of easy, is because my dad has done for 10 years, he's made so many instruction videos covering every one of those <laughs> details. And so we're gonna link to all those in the description of this video. So please, if you're Are interested you in looking at yeah, I'm I'll, gonna do well, that. I think you might need a help cross-reference. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of links. Make sure I've gotta find the link. Sometimes it's even hard for us. So for all of you that are looking at this type of stuff or wanna learn more about any of those individual parts, those videos will be linked in the description, so check those out and make sure to check back and, well, check back every day because my dad <laughs> just makes videos at random. But go ahead. But the and new make series sure, of Digby? The new Sigby, series of Digby starting the new year. We're going to get Digby up and running and we're going to, it's going to be fun to see what, uh, what people think when they see Digby out in the wild. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about this. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys soon.